Welcome back. The Parliamentary Portfolio Committee on Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, that's COCTA, says the state of many municipalities in the country are dire and it is not a pretty sight. The Portfolio Committee has been travelling to various municipalities in different provinces in recent weeks to assess the state that they are in, as well as the progress on disciplinary actions taken against employees suspected of being part of the mismanagement of funds. Now, the committee said that over a dozen municipalities in KwaZulu-Natal are currently being investigated for unauthorised, irregular, fruitless and wasteful expenditure. This week, the Carter portfolio will be travelling to different municipalities in Gauteng. It was in July this year, Kimi Makwetu, the Auditor General, released a report on the outcomes of local government for the period 2018-2019. And this really painted an undesirable picture of billions of rands being mismanaged by municipalities. Faith Mutambi, the chairperson of the Parliamentary Portfolio Committee on Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, is with us now to talk about the state of municipalities in the country. Chairperson, thanks very much. Welcome to Morning Live. Good morning, Leanne, and good morning to our viewers and listeners at home. Thank you so much for the warm welcome. Yeah, it's, it's a, an absolute pleasure. Now, you have travel to various municipalities across the country and as I mentioned the 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 situation is dire perhaps you can tell us a little bit about what you saw and what you found from your travels indeed we we, we have been visiting the various municipalities in the country we have also since the lockdown held over 63 meetings actually interacting with municipalities in, in the country. But then when you, you move around, you at the first hand see the conquered frontiers and also progress. And then as you move around, you will see there's excellent somewhere. For example, there are municipalities that has achieved clean audit for several years. Also, there is also a lot of mediocrity somewhere else where you find that uh, some people have just failed just to address the issue, the basic one of water services. Maybe for a year, your classical example is Swane, where we are. You know, the Amman Skral matter has been on the news for quite some time, where in the community has been complaining of them not getting uh, good quality water. Mm -hmm. But I should also say the audit MFA, MFMA, audit come, outcomes, as you've said earlier, has been a concern for us. Yeah. Because if you check throughout, you find that there's some stagnation. Instead of a municipality progressing on their audit outcomes, what you see normally, you feel like the issue of the Deben Metro, where we are coming from uh, over the weekends, you find that they had they, an unqualified audit opinion but it had findings on compliance matters. You could, it had the potential to have a clean audit had it complied with the supply chain management prescripts. Such that you find that because of that non-compliance, the metro happened to find itself, itself having incurred an irregular expenditure amounting to over 2.3 billion during the past financial year. Sure. And this is very worrisome for us as a committee. As no any other uh, municipality in the country has incurred such a huge irregular expenditure. Yeah. So basically what you find as you move around is, is mainly around uh, ignorance of the law, complete disregard of the supply chain regulations. And then you, you get, so at some point you find that the municipalities even fail to spend the grants such that the grants then get reverted back to to national treasury. And it's a matter of concern for all of us because in so doing, because of the delegation of responsibility and the lack of oversight and the lack of political leadership, it's the communities at the end that suffer because then the money that's meant to, to deliver the services for them, if it gets reverted back to treasury, it means then these communities will never have access to this planned project that was supposed to be delivered by the municipality. Yeah. You know, Chairperson, I mean, everything that you're saying now is unfortunately nothing new. And it's something that 
through the years has just gotten worse and worse and worse. I mean, when you talk to what's happening in KwaZulu-Natal, you talk about this um, irregular expenditure and the wastage of 2.3 billion rand. I know that you you have been asked about um, the former uh, mayor there, uh, Zandile Gumede. You didn't want to talk too much about her, but what you did say is that it's not just one individual. There are a lot of people involved in this. And this has been the nature of South African politics for a while, is that you cannot possibly blame it on one individual. There are a lot of people involved in this that are still, unfortunately, there. What do you have to say about that? I mean, this has, you, you felt this personally as well. Yes, I, I find it personally because if you check, on top of that, because the issue of lack of consequence management, if you check in the case of Etiquin, the municipality has then written off the 351 million of these 2.3 billion expenditure. And then they could not explain on the status of the remaining 2 billion. The other issue was that you asked them, what were the steps taken against those employees who were found uh, wanting? Normally they will tell you they are referring the matter to the MPEC committee to take a decision, which to me, and all of us as the committee members, we find it very disturbing. Because if you look at the provision of the Municipal Finance Management Act, it empowers accounting officers in the name of municipal manager to then effect consequence management where there is financial misconduct, financial irregularities. So that lack of leadership and the lack of consequence management, that's why you see this thing continually happening. And then our concern again as a as 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 as, as, as the committee, if you check also in the case of Etequin Metro, there was a report that during this lockdown period, there was over hundred million that we, we has utilized just solely to pay for security. And you ask yourself, how did this happen? Whereas people were on lockdown. There was an issue also of the money that was spent on the virtual concerts without following proper procurement police processes. Then we are told uh, we are waiting for MPEC committee to take a decision on clear, straightforward matters wherein the accounting officer and the council in the case of senior management could have taken a decision to effect consequence management and apply remedial action. Yeah. Uh, Chairperson, I, I know we've only got you for another minute. We were struggling to get um, to get this link up and running. There's too much to ask you. But in the northwest, there's also 12 municipalities where th there's the threat that they are going to be placed under administration due to mismanagement of funds. So that, that we've spoken to KwaZulu-Natal, the dire situation there. Now there's the northwest. There's also the issues in the free state where ESCOM is struggling to get money from, uh, I think, billions of rands from the municipalities there and the power utilities recently attached 139 farms worth two and a half billion rand from the Majabang municipality in the free state um, as security on this debt I mean they, they are just pounding now you're about to go into Gauteng this this is just painting a very very difficult situation is there hope this wasteful expenditure will you ever get this back Definitely, if we start to talk from the top and allow those who are deployed in position of responsibility to comply with the law, to effect consequence management, and where this malfeasance has are supposed to rot, that's the only way to get this thing right. Yeah. Like you are indicating, uh, as a committee, over the past three months, we have been trying to assess the impact of this section 139. And there are fewer success stories that that's a matter that I think we can schedule another interview to talk about it, whether the intervention has worked based on the fact that at times when MECs uh, try to intervene, sometimes they get a uh, resistance from the council themselves, you recall, some MECs are taken to courts, but also it's an issue that we feel we need to attend to because also why do we have a situation where in the yeah. MECs have to come into, into, in a later stage? 
There are Section 71 reports that are submitted to Treasury, Provincial Treasury, and also Provincial Copter on a monthly basis. Does these departments being the national departments of both COCTA and the national treasury, including both provincial treasury and provincial COCTAs, have the requisite skills so that these reports that are submitted monthly in terms of the compliance with the MFMA, then they are able to be interrogated so that nobody waits until things get worse. Because if that was happening, we wouldn't have a situation like this. Yeah. And then the other issue, should be a collective responsibility of now we are talking about the district development model in other instances when you move you find that a uh, people just think this matter is the matter of cooperative governance alone but to me this is a whole government matter because you know local government is on the cold face so i should think these are the matters it's a lot of them and there's been challenges that are there but i should think if you check the regression on the audit outcome that the AG releases annually, it's a matter of concern and then basically it's lack of consequence management, Ch then um, lack of oversight. Yeah, Chairperson, I, I have to let mm. you go, but you, you keep saying it's a lack of consequence management, that heads must roll from the top and that people are just getting away with things. You know, it, it is hard and I know there will be critics out there listening to you speaking and the question that goes through their mind is, what gives you the authority to speak? Because you yourself have been in a position where a lot of corruption, allegations of treason, different things have been pointed against you and your management of various portfolios, communication being one of them, right here at the SABC, that was on its knees at one stage and is still trying to learn to stand on its own. Um, how can people believe you that you really want to get to the bottom of corruption? I see Lynn, Lynn, these matters, of course, let's you say, I can't be a product of public opinions. You and me, you'll agree with me during my tenure at the SABC in terms of the audit outcome, the report that was tabled by the AG, a Chapter 9 institution. Go and check that. From the status where we got in up the time we left, you'll check the audit outcomes. There was progress. I remember there was a matter where the SABC had the qualification on that of the board. You know, the board in terms of the Broadcasting Act and the Companies Act gives provision for that. And if it's for the outcome of that ad hoc committee, of some of the people, you see them, they, are, they themselves are criminals. They've been appearing in courts. That kangaroo court that we attended, in, then that's the matter you know that I've taken that matter to court. So I'm still waiting for a situation where somebody will say, I did this, and I'll answer for that. For, but for me to be judged on public opinion, I refuse to do that, and I still maintain that there's nothing wrong that I did. Um, Chairperson, I've got to let you go. I know you're late. I've already stolen four minutes of your time. We need to invite you back. We need to talk more about this. But uh, talking to us in her capacity, Faith Mutambi, as the Chairperson of the Parliamentary Portfolio Committee on Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, uh, the state of our municipalities in the country and how dire they are. Let's take a break. See you after this.